Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with Gary Spencer Smith and we're going to talk about making that transition from being a contractor on your projects to stepping back and starting to manage your business from an overall perspective. And I like to say it's that expression of instead of working in your business, you're working on your business. And Gary's been able to do this very successfully. He's been a real estate investor for over 20 years and we're going to talk about how he's been able to make that transition. Before we do that though, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me and without further ado let's get into it Gary it's so great to have you here today thanks for taking some time out of I know your crazy busy day to join me uh, give us a little bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as a real estate investor hey, hi Darren thanks for having me on um, as a real estate investor you know you mentioned 20 years I would say probably about 12 years full-time and then 10 years I've been investing in real estate. And it was always one of those things where I just planned on having two or three properties over my working career, and that was gonna supplement my pension. I was in the military at the time, so I figured I'd do 20 years, have three houses, done. That was my retirement. Um, as we know, life changes uh, you know, in a flash. So things changed. I ended up emigrating to Canada from the UK, hence the fantastic accent. I am. Um, <laughs> I uh, emigrated over in 2007, and in 2008 was when I really you know, picked up Rich Dad Poor Dad, and that was the mind, I wouldn't even say a mind shift, I would say it was a, a affirmation or a confirmation even of what I already had as a subconscious belief system. And then from that, you know, you start the path, education, courses, programs, some great, some not so great, I always take something from everything. And um, I guess it was more of a trial and error. I started doing things, learning on the job, realizing what I could do, what I could improve on, what I had a skill set at. Mm -hmm. I'm actually by trade in the UK. I'm an electrical engineer and did my electrician's ticket. And then when I came to Canada, I did a bit of refrigeration work, HVAC. So I had a good grounding and I'd worked around the trades. And I just watched some of the standard of work that was coming out and thought, I could do that better. So I kind of just started doing some of the jobs. And I think as people... No, you know, sometimes there's the promise of living off real estate, but that might not happen on your first one or two houses. You know, what, you know, cash flow of 200 bucks a month doesn't really change your life that much. Sure, it's nice, but it's not a game changer. Um, and I, when it was a supplemental to, my, to a job, it was just hard work. So I just, you know what, I'm stopping. I'm going to do the work over here. I paid myself 20 bucks an hour as a contractor. Um, on my joint ventures, which actually saved my joint venture people money. They were getting a skilled trades person. And there were some jobs might have took me a little bit longer, but you know, I think overall the investor certainly got a great deal out of that and having me work on the jobs. And it allowed me to expand my, my skill set. So yeah, that was kind of where I got to. And then last few years, reevaluated what I was doing, the time I was putting in. And I thought, you know, I need to expand and scale. And you it's hard to do that. You know, if every two minutes your phone's ringing to deal with something like on, as you mentioned, on your business and you're working in your business, it's the jobs get longer and longer. And I, I started to find that I was dropping the, not dropping the ball a lot, but there was, you know, I get home at night and I'm like, Oh, I forgot to do that because something else had happened in the phone had ran. So it was, you know, I, I was creating stress in my life. So mm -hmm. I decided I need to de-stress looked at the big picture and then slowly start to scale away, brought in partners, built a different team and changed the direction. And that allowed us to get to where we are today. When you first started looking at pulling away from being there on the job site, what was the first sort of action that you took or what was the first thing you started to take away or um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for that you started to... I think I've got the answer for where you're going now. Good drywall. Yeah, drywall. You know what? <laughs> There was me and my, my uh, stepdaughter, Chris, I was my business partner. She worked with me on a few projects and she wanted to learn everything. So we were just doing the whole suite renovation ourselves. And it was like, this is not worth my time. Being more efficient with your time. I think there's a point that you'll realize that you're good at some stuff and not good at others. And then when you hire someone that's really great at something, you realize the efficiency of that time. And it was also, I was looking at, you know, we were doing two, three projects a year, which was good. You know, we had a solid income and we were still owners of the properties because it was a buy and hold. So we were building, you know, wealth, starting to build cash flow. And we did that for probably three years, Chris and I, like solidly, you know, every few months a new house would start, a new project. And then that was really what got us ahead in the game. But I didn't want to do that forever. 
what do I want out of life? And uh, it's a saying that we'll use all the time. Real estate should be funding my life. It shouldn't be my life. Even though, you know, you still have to, like it is, if we sit down at dinner, we're talking real estate 24 seven. It, it is our life. But what I mean is it shouldn't be taking up every spare minute that you have to dedicate to it. When you choose to do something, that's a passion. When you have to do something, that's a job. And Absolutely. I think real estate was becoming a job for me and I was losing that passion. So when you started to look at stepping back, did you look at the cost of what services were like, for instance, you know, if we look at electrical and plumbing and HVAC, those are probably the three top, you know, trades that you're going to pay the highest value for. Yeah. Um, were you taking on more of those later on in the, in the process? Like when you were looking at like maybe painting, for instance, is a relatively inexpensive trade to hire. When you started stepping back, did you look at the cost of items or did you just go with like what your skill set was, what you really liked to do and then started backing away from those things as you, as you move forward? Um, so the first, I mean, drywall was the first to go. I just mm. realized I wasn't fast enough to get it done. Like, mm. and the time it took me to send. The second one, which is actually my trade, was electrical. I just thought, you know, I mean, I'm not licensed in BC anyway, so I used to have to get stuff checked and the other person pulled the permit, but my electrician used to let me do a lot because he knew the standard I could do stuff. And he just come in, quick look, yep, good. Um, but then that was the first one I handed over because I just, I didn't want to do it. It was just, you know what? Someone else can just do that. It's done. I, I, and I think as well with, with things like electrical HVAC, your plumbing, you're hiring a highly skilled person. So you know, as long as you understand it to have the discussion of what you want, then it makes life a lot easier. And I think for people watching as well, if you are not a tradesperson or have the skills, find people that, you know, like Darren or, or myself or someone else who's been investing and has done it and ask them how long it takes. You should know roughly how long a job should take to do. And if it's mm -hmm. going to take longer, they should be stopping and coming to you first. You shouldn't be surprised at the end with like, whoa, you said this and this is what I got. Like that should never happen. So if you're unsure, you don't have the skills, find someone who does and just ask them. So when you made the transition from being there every single day to you said you, I think you mentioned you started building a team out. So yep. you obviously, was that the approach that you took instead of hiring a, a contractor, you just started hiring a team of people and creating your own system basically. Is that what you did? Yeah. So Carissa, my stepdaughter came back to me five, six years ago now and just, she'd been away. She came home she went, yeah, I want to learn what you do. So I said, okay, let's, you know, buy some work boots. Let's get on the job sites and start to learn, which is actually She's 25 now and she can like wire plumb just as bad at drywall as I am. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> but uh, so, so that was the start. And then she wants to live in Bali. So it's like, well, mm. let's try and get as much of this business done remotely as we can. So what can we outsource? What do we need to build? What jobs are actually like, you know, looking at the time, you know, the 80, 20 rule, Pareto principle, what takes up 80% of our time. And we started building the team around, the direction we want to go and we're offloading the jobs on the other side. I think one thing I've found stepping back, actually a lot more opportunities get presented as well, because now we have this team, you know, I've, I've got, you know, my, all my contractors that I need to use. I don't need to be on site. They know what we expect now. I've got people that can project manage on site that'll show up every day. We have the property management in place. Like all these different people are there. And now, you know, for example, someone the other day, I was speaking to, you know, Randy and Steve from Reinvestors. I was speaking to those guys yeah. the other day on their talk. Someone literally offered me a property. It was a trouble. They have a troubled tenant and they just want to offload it. And no one wants to take it on. And I'm like, I'll have that all day long. So now we're going to, it's highly likely we're going to be purchasing that pretty soon. And I'm not even going to be involved. Like I'm literally going to write the offer, a piece of paperwork and set everyone to work and off it goes. You know, I mean, you still get consulted, but you know, a 10 minute phone call or a five minutes on site to quickly brain, brain mash something out is way easier than, you know, turning up a day and trying to get a day's work in while you answer your phone. If you, I was doing two, three a year. So we were doing like, you know, maybe at the, our price at the time, $600,000 of projects. Mm -hmm. Last year we did 6 million just because I wasn't doing it myself. So your ability to scale. So sure, you know, if you want to stay involved, you can still be involved but you you've limit of what scale you can do if you're the one actually on the tools. So, and yeah. it, it's going to slow down usually initially, you know, there'll be some dip, but then it allows you, you know, rather than plateau here, which is, you might dip a bit, but it allows you to then springboard off and accelerate up. And I think once you see that and look back, you're like, 
why did I even do that? And it's funny because I've offloaded two businesses and I'm still like, how did I even have the time? Because I'm still, you're going to occupy your time with something else. But if it's with something that's working on your business and the growth of your business, then that'll accelerate. There'll be that point where it just takes over and you look back and think, oh, why did I waste so many years doing it like that? That's how I felt. I mean, you know, now we're, we can scale up. You can buy houses not even locally anymore. So we ended up, you know, snapping up a couple in Edmonton, Leduc, yeah, just because I knew it was a great town and I'm, I'm not involved at all. And that was an eye opener, actually. That was two, two years ago. And that was an eye opener. I was like, wow, I had nothing to do. I don't manage it. I've done all I've done is the paper and connect and, you know, join the dots that people need to join. And now I'm profiting from it. What's your advice for somebody who's in your shoes uh, or was in your shoes, let's call it a few years ago, when you were on site every day and felt like you were an integral part of every, the, the success of your business? How do you, how would you advise somebody now? How would you coach somebody to say you need to start to step back and what, what would, what advice would you give them? So uh, there's, there's two parts of that. First one is what do they really want to do? Cause some people are happy being on site and they need that challenge. So stepping away, what are you actually going to do if you step away and how long before you're bored or you miss it? Cause that, that also happens as well. Um, so if someone was in those shoes, I'd be like, really figure out what you want. The other one is, if you think you are that integral to your business, then it is your ego and to have that. And that was me. They're like hundred percent. I could see that, you know, certainly parts of that in myself. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not as important as I think I am. Mm. Like <laughs> just stepping away to that. And people really don't care about me that much. Sure. I have a, you know, the reputation, yeah. but honestly, I was to die tomorrow. They'd be like, Oh no, you did you hear Gary died? And that'd be it. The people would move on. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's and when you realize that that you're okay we're not that really important so <laughs> I think, sad, um, but, sad but true maybe i think the biggest thing for a lot of contractors when they're working on projects as well as being real estate investors is the cost savings how do you then advise people to be able to step back if they're saving let's call it one third of the expenses by being there on site do you advise them that they're potentially not looking at the right projects if the numbers don't work, if they're not there, or how do you get around that? So I, one thing I'll do is I always factor in the math anyway, if I wasn't there, mm. because hey, you can pull it back. You can be injured. You can be in a car crash. That's not even your, like stuff happens in an instant. So I think, yes, one would be, you should be factoring for that. The second is, why are you not paying yourself? You know, did we hear it pay yourself first? And sure, I, I know I was giving my joint ventures a deal at the start there but i was trying to get going i think once you're already going it's different because you've got a track record um and i think a lot of contractors get over the perfection or get over the you know a lot of people like they, they want things done a certain way and i'm guilty of that like i have to like really be like, oh, he's doing it like that and i've got to like just take the breath walk you know what it's still gonna work that's how he wants to do it. Just let, let them do it. Did you find there was a moment where you were looking to hire somebody else and maybe you weren't satisfied with how quickly they responded or their price or, their, or what their quality was? So your immediate reaction is to jump in and just say, I can do this myself, right? Or did you have to like seriously look at that and go, okay, maybe if I just spent another four to eight hours trying to source somebody else who could do this really, really well, that time is going to pay for itself in dividends when I'm able to step back and do all these other things. Yes, I would jump in and I just get it done because I'm on a schedule. My head needs, you know, to, to, to. the second thing was once I started not stepping in and stuff was going, I don't want to say south, but not getting completed in the time frames I wanted it completed in, that bothered me. Now, you know, the last project that was just floating there, COVID kicked in, you know, there, there was a big impact and stuff. There's a little bit of time overrun, but now I, and I'm a small town, right? Where I'm investing 20,000 people. So there's not that huge choice of contractors. And I'm like, anyway, the ones that are good are busy. So I now factor that into a lot of the math, the time frames. Hey, I'm, I'm okay running this for six months because I'm not doing a six. I'm not doing a flip where the time is as crucial. Mm -hmm. I'm typically doing a buy and hold. So, Hey, you know what? Five years from now, if this overruns by three, four months, am I really going to be that bothered in five years? And if the answer is no in five years, then why am I allowing it to really bother me right now? Because I get, you become task focused or goal focused. 
Mm. And I think when you're working in your business, you become task focused because like, oh, I've got to pick up the nails. I've got to get this. You're not thinking of, you know, the goal focused. And it's easy to lose sight of your goal and work two, three years straight. And you haven't even mm. stepped near your goal. You've just worked for three years. And I've, I've been guilty of that too. You know, just I feel like I'm doing something because I'm busy, but I'm actually got nowhere near my goal at all. I don't know about you, but I still get the same sort of rush of being on a project and watching it and not actually having to be there every single day. I got a picture this morning of a roughed in, not roughed in, it's nearly finished, the shower with the cement boards up and he was ready to put the tiles. And I was like, the last picture I saw was roughed in. And I'm just like, oh, that looks so good. The tiles aren't even up, but I'm just like, oh. Because we Contract. know, right? We know what comes next. Contract a phone. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I think that's about, a new thing, trademark that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll start a new YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, I started this with, with Randy and Steve. I got to continue it with you. It's called Real Estate Rapid Fire. I'm going to ask you a couple just quick questions to finish up today. Uh, yeah, they did, the other day, just so you know, they did one and I, uh, they said I lost on the speed of my answers. So I'll try and be quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what is, uh, what is the, your, your favorite project that you've worked on to, to date? This one, the houseboat company, for sure. There's just so many moving parts and it really, I use my brain a lot and I'm, I'm a problem solver by nature. So, you know, there's lots of problems. So I'm, I'm always thinking it keeps me on my toes and it's on the lake. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's a mistake that you made in real estate investing that you would avoid if you had to go, go do it a second time? Honestly, I think I would get a coach earlier. Mm. Just, um, I wouldn't even say that wasn't necessarily a mistake. It was just something I learned the value of time. Um, I think probably the, the biggest mistake was under, undervaluing what I was worth in joint ventures when I first started. You know, I give so much away. I don't regret it. But yeah, I understand now the value I bring to someone. Your favorite book? More Than Cashflow by Julie Broad. Awesome book. And you know, you read it, it's basically... Every investor who's done it for a few years consistently, it's pretty much their journey. And it, it really tells you about the risks versus, you know, the height. What's a way that you like to give back? Because I know that all of us that are in the positions that we are often give back to in, in some form or some way. I really enjoy working with kids. I used to run youth leadership camps in the summer and stuff like that. Um, time, we had to stop doing that. But yeah, that that's my, if I could, you know, do nothing but one thing for the next 10 years, I think helping those, you know, six to nine year olds just develop their leadership skills. Love doing that. I volunteer at the, I say volunteer, I volunteered because my other half is the, one of the directors of the Alberni District Fall Fair. So that's one of the biggest fundraisers for the community in, in the Valley. It raises a few hundred thousand dollars every year. So I'm pretty involved in that. Um, and then obviously helping people, you know, many times, and I'm sure people who are watching this, if people need help, they can pick up the phone. I'll gladly sit, talk, help um, real estate. The other day, I've, I've given people tours around Port Alberni who are looking to invest. You know, I want to help people to not make the same mistakes that we did. And I'll be honest with the advice. This is great. This is bad. You know, don't do it. No, yeah, that's really smart. No, that's really stupid. So maybe it's a little bit too blunt. But yeah, I like to help other people get where we've done. Because, you know, you achieve something in life. So why not help other people do it? When the, when the tide comes in, all boats float. How poignant for where you're sitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary, I'm going to leave your information in the description below that anyone wants to get in contact with you. They absolutely can. I'm also going to leave a, a, you know, a link to your YouTube channel. So go give Gary some love at Revenue. With that, I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. It's always great to sit down and talk with you. I, you make me laugh and your accent really is the best one that I've had on my channel so far <laughs> today. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode today with Gary and I, if you don't mind, just go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and feel free to leave questions and comments below. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, Gary, thanks for so much for being here. Uh, it's always great to talk with you and I hope that you have a great rest of your day, a continued success on your new venture. And I can't wait to interview in a, you in a couple months and uh, see what it looks like when you pan around to the- But we got to do that live out here. You got to come out here. That sounds good to me. I'm, I need a trip out to BC. There's been so many people yeah. I've been interviewing lately and I, I love traveling out to BC. So I'll definitely- And we own a pub. Did I mention that? <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm there. That's the, there it is. There's the, the reason I need to come out. Awesome. Have a, have a great day, my friend. And uh, we'll talk no, to you No, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Darren. No problem.